Puff was nobody, bro. He used everybody to get to those parts in his life. He's a chameleon. He'll take from somebody else and, and make it seem like it's him. Make it seem like he did it. That Big Mac, they did enough investigation. See, people think that, that when the federal government go in there on you, the reason they got a 99% uh, conviction rate, because most people say, <laughs> they got me. Was doing it. Where was he at? What was he doing? Because he said that they never had sex. If you read it in the thing, they never had sex. It appears that Diddy is engaged in a campaign to tarnish the reputation of certain insiders, with rumors suggesting his primary target is none other than his former bodyguard, Gene Deal. Deal previously divulged information about Diddy's extravagant lifestyle and personal relationships, making him a sought-after guest for interviews. However, recent reports indicate that Deal has gone too far by revealing details of Diddy's involvement in illicit activities. Faced with this breach of trust, the music mogul has decided to take action, sending a clear message to his ex-bodyguard to cease further social media theatrics. So what's Diddy got to say about all the allegations being thrown at him by his ex-bodyguard? Let's find out, shall we? But of course, before I spill anything, make sure first that you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more updates and videos like this. Now let's dive in. Never had sex, buddy. How would he grope your your ass? How would he play with your genitals? Yeah, it don't make sense. I mean, it don't make sense. How you wake up butt the f naked? With two other men in the bed with Diddy, and nothing happened. I think he was just trying to save face, man. But do you think it's a possibility that he meant that you know Diddy will grope his you know butt, you know instead? I mean, because I'm I'm trying to figure out how does that work? You know, somebody groping your ass. You are gonna say your butt? He he. The lawyer would say, "What do you mean?" He would say. My butt cheeks. There's a such thing called bones. We gotta fight through a lot of hate. It's just, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all right. We Reaching moment of love because it is important. I feel fight for your reputation. I can't wait. I can't wait for everybody to find out what's really been going on in the background. The industry's tension continues to escalate, and with the increasing allegations against Diddy, escaping unscathed seems unlikely this time. The recent raids on his properties have unearthed startling evidence, including footage allegedly showing numerous male artists in intimate encounters with the music mogul, as confirmed by Gene himself. Should these encounters be deemed unlawful or non-consensual, Diddy may find himself facing legal consequences akin to his acquaintance, R. Kelly. With his unchecked power and influence, Diddy has long disregarded caution with numerous damning claims circulating online, often substantiated by Gene Deal. Deal has even exposed details about Diddy's troubling mentorship, a subject Usher was unable to publicly address, leading to a confrontation between Puff and Usher that resulted in the latter's hospitalization. You're good to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. And then when you get 18, you get the house. You okay. get the mansion. Okay. I yeah. get the mansion. Yeah. All right. So where, where are we off to now? Where would you like to go? Okay. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours. Let's go. Um, are we gonna? Let's just go get some girls. Let's go and get some girls. A man after my heart. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. A 15-year-old budding artist operating your Lamborghini is a boy's paradise. Don't get me wrong, folks, this video was posted over 14 years ago, so it makes sense that back then, nobody saw the big warning sign. Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, however, has a lot more fascinating anecdotes about his former employer. He once revealed that when he was in Atlanta, he and Diddy visited an unusual bookstore. The former bodyguard remembered his boss taking a brown paper bag and stuffing it full of toys, including plugs, for intimate games. While Gene Deal never explicitly stated how the music mogul was using his goods, he did kind of give away the identity of the person Diddy spent the night with following that exotic shopping. And I know the fans want to hear some of this. He has revealed Diddy's supposed affair with rapper Jerule, 
and based on Gene's account, he was watching over the door that concealed Diddy's private gathering with Jerule and a number of toys. I know the fans want to hear some... Though merely rumors, it's been whispered that Diddy possesses a compelling stash of recordings documenting his illicit and contentious liaisons with men, allegedly tucked away for safekeeping. This speculation stems from Diddy's own admission during an interview, where he hinted at creating a personal documentary chronicling his life's journey. This comes as no surprise to Gene Deal, who has repeatedly attested that Diddy's preferred pastime involved secluding himself with another man, a fully stocked bar, and a bag of toys. Deal vividly recounts an instance where he stood sentry outside a door while his then-boss indulged in revelry with a fellow rapper. Reflecting on that night, Deal emphatically states, I know that for a fact, because I was right there. Yo, Gene, watch the door. Don't let nobody come through, he said. I'll watch the door, I replied. And sure enough, as I kept guard, I witnessed them emerged, unclothed. No one needed to tell me. I saw it with my own eyes. While one might assume Diddy's company consisted of women, the reality paints a different picture. Those young artists and girlfriends merely serve as a facade, concealing Puff's true, intimate inclinations a fact widely acknowledged within the industry. Recall how Cassie subtly referenced Diddy's unconventional desires in her lawsuit? The music mogul swiftly silenced that matter within 24 hours, evidently unwilling to let the truth come to light. It on Thursday, and just over 24 hours later, they settled. It appears that Diddy is harboring a multitude of secrets, and when confronted with evidence, something he once prided himself on, he becomes unsettled. However, his standing in the industry has suffered considerable damage, especially following Cassie's startling revelations. Individuals who had long remained silent are now stepping forward to hasten the music mogul's downfall. While Cassie may have been silenced with a hefty sum, others are determined to unveil Diddy's murky truths, with his former bodyguard Gene Deal assuming a prominent role in the spotlight. Social media is buzzing with calls to expose Diddy, suggesting that now is the opportune moment to speak out, given his faltering attempts to silent dissenters. As one commenter astutely observed, Diddy's arrogance may blind him to the reality that he is not invincible. Another adds, After 25 years of close protection, Gene likely knows a lot about the inner workings of Diddy's world. Indeed, given Gene's proximity to Diddy throughout his tenure as a bodyguard, his insights could prove invaluable in unraveling the truth. Despite the ongoing turmoil and a steady stream of damning revelations, Diddy appears unfazed by the swirling allegations and incriminating evidence, maintaining an aura of invincibility. In the wake of widespread outcry over his illicit activities and high-profile liaisons, Gene Deal has stepped into the limelight, shedding light on past events, including instances where his ex-boss mingled with individuals of questionable age appropriateness. Diddy's legal team swiftly refuted these claims, signaling a potential downward spiral as Deal prepares to unveil more damning information. Deal himself acknowledges the consequences of his actions and the path he has chosen, showing no remorse. What began as lighthearted jests from Gene has morphed into a somber expose, each interview delving deeper into the darkness surrounding the music mogul. With grave allegations mounting, it's no surprise that his former bodyguard has chosen to break his silence, no longer willing to shield Diddy from the consequences of his actions. Gene has openly declared that he no longer feels bound to keep any secrets for the hip-hop producer, and he's even expressed willingness to testify against him. He emphasized that most of his claims have already been made public online, indicating he would have no problem with repeating them in a court of law. I have no problem sitting in a court of law doing my due diligence and testifying on stuff I already spoke of on the internet, he stated. While Diddy's high-profile associates remain conspicuously silent, Gene Deal shows no hesitation in divulging everything he knows, earning widespread respect from both the public and the music mogul's victims. With numerous detractors and the specter of his largest downfall looming, Diddy remains steadfast in his belief that he is untouchable, arrogantly convinced of his ability to eliminate any opposition. All them gnats, you know, they they can't really touch me. At the end of the day, y'all see and y'all know what it is. Gene Deal recently disclosed that his former boss had startled him on numerous occasions by candidly expressing his intentions. According to Gene, he overheard Diddy remarking to someone, something's got to change. I don't care if Tupac has to pass away. Big has to pass away or Shine goes to jail. 
Something's got to change. With Diddy currently entangled in legal woes, he is undoubtedly eager to prevent past narratives from resurfacing. I'll give you this and that. Now, that could be a lot of speculations or whatever like that. But why would you... However, Gene Deal appears determined to hint at further startling revelations about his ex-boss's clandestine lifestyle. If they want me to testify, I'm going to testify and tell them, he asserted. Now embroiled in a legal quagmire, Diddy likely wishes to avoid drawing attention to the only individual privy to Bad Boy's clandestine activities over the years. It's hardly surprising that he's making a last-ditch effort to silence credible witnesses, allegedly targeting his former employee. Some truths are best kept buried, yet as numerous fans have noted, Gene Deal is unafraid to confront uncomfortable realities. As one commentator expressed, Thank you for speaking up. I just wish you would have done it a long time ago and saved some of those artists. Another suggested, You need to work in a prosecutor's office. This man has more knowledge than any book. For years, whispers and rumors have circulated regarding Diddy's gender preferences, with recent revelations from Jaguar Wright adding fuel to the fire. According to Jaguar, she is acquainted with a lawyer who allegedly stumbled upon Diddy and Christopher Williams in a compromising situation. Shockingly, the door was left unlocked when the lawyer walked in, witnessing Williams on his knees while Diddy sat back, seemingly enjoying the encounter. To you this way, there are mutual acquaintances between her and I. Mm. And that's as far as I can go. Okay. When you... I don't talk to her, but I speak to her. Indeed, the allegations are deeply scandalous and disturbing. Jaguar's accounts paint a disconcerting picture of the events, suggesting that the encounter continued even after the lawyer walked in, indicating a blatant disregard for boundaries. However, the revelations don't end there. According to Wright, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, added further troubling details to the narrative. Allegedly, a lawyer who had previously worked with Diddy recounted witnessing R&B singer Christopher Williams engaging in intimate acts with Diddy. The door was reportedly unlocked, leading the lawyer to unwittingly walk in on the scene. The lawyer claimed that Diddy demanded such acts in exchange for a demo deal, justifying it as a demonstration of power. These allegations, if true, underscore the gravity of the situation and raise serious questions about the dynamics at play within Diddy's circle. We're going to get you and your little dog, too. Mm. And congratulations, young Miami. <laughs> Run as fast as Cassie did. Gene's allegations paint a disturbing picture of Diddy's behavior, suggesting not only his gender orientation, but also a pattern of physical harm towards women in his life. According to Gene Deal, Diddy has been accused of physically harming his former partners. Allegedly, he maltreated his baby mother, Misa Hilton, over suspicions of infidelity with an EPMD employee. Gene further claims that Diddy also attempted to attack Kim Porter, but she defended herself by slitting his wrist, resulting in his hospitalization. Additionally, there are reports of Diddy breaking Kim's nose, an incident that some fans recall being allegedly hushed up and followed by Diddy flying in a plastic surgeon. This pattern of behavior suggests a troubling dynamic in Diddy's relationships, with a fan aptly noting that a woman who refuses to tolerate mistreatment poses a threat to a man with a fragile ego. Gene Deal's assertions shed further light on Diddy's fluidity in gender expression, alleging instances where he went to a gay club with Exhibit. Moreover, Deal insinuates that he personally witnessed Diddy engaging in intimate acts with men, contrasting his first-hand observations with Jaguar's accounts. These claims add another layer to the complex narrative surrounding Diddy's orientation and behavior, prompting continued scrutiny into his personal life and relationships. Thing happened to him? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning were gone. In a startling interview, Gene reveals an incident from the early 2000s when he accompanied Diddy to an exotic bookstore where Diddy reportedly purchased a bag full of erotic toys. The narrative takes a bizarre turn as Gene claims that Diddy brought these items to a concert in North Carolina. Allegedly, upon arriving at the hotel, Diddy expressed a desire to visit fellow rapper Jerule in his private apartment. Despite Gene's attempts to dissuade him, Diddy insisted on making an unexpected visit to Jerule's suite. According to Gene, 
Diddy proceeded to enter Jarul's apartment against his advice. Jean observed that only Diddy and Jarul were present in the room, with Jarul allegedly cautioning Jean against entering, implying that there were questionable activities transpiring inside. The former bodyguard took to Instagram to address Jaguar Wright's claims, acknowledging the validity of some of her allegations. People are always sending me stuff, man, he stated. They sent me this stuff on Jaguar Wright. I salute you, goddess. A lot of the things you're talking about are real. Continuing his discourse, Jean recalls seeing Jaguar Wright in Philadelphia many years ago at a club, recounting an incident where Puff Daddy instructed R&B singer Music Soulchild to remove his turban. After expressing his appreciation for Wright's efforts, he addresses her claims of being paid to keep quiet. Baby girl, listen to me. Ain't nobody paid Big Gene off. Ain't nobody ran Big Gene off. It's not happening. Never ran, never will, never have. From nobody or no man. Sweetheart, you're wrong about that. So I've heard you say that twice. Somebody sent that to me twice. So I'm letting you know, baby girl. After addressing the claims about him, Deal seemingly confirmed some of Wright's assertions. He admitted to witnessing disturbing behavior during his time with his former boss, prompting him to turn to prayer and scripture. I'm the one who came out here, you know, to let y'all know I've seen some of the devil's stuff, he expressed. Deal then shifts the conversation to Mary J. Blige, another artist targeted by Jaguar's claims. In a previous outburst aimed at the I'm Going Down singer, Wright alleged that Blige had concealed her gender orientation for years while challenging her to a versus battle. I can produce my own songs. I can sit down with a competent mix engineer and walk all the way through a mix. I can do those things, Mary. Can you? What can you do, Mary, other than play dress up and engage in intimate encounters in secrecy, hoping nobody finds out? And if I'm lying, sue me, Mary, Wright asserted. Speaking about Mary, Deal spoke of an encounter where they discussed life and her experiences in the industry, a detail that seemed to upset some people when he disclosed it previously. He then mentions Kim Porter, Misa Hilton, and Kamora Lee Simmons, suggesting that Wright's claims regarding them are accurate. Deal then shocks viewers by revealing information about Blige that even Wright didn't disclose. When she told me, you know, she had to be involved with a lot of men in this industry, I was like, okay. He shares before bursting into laughter. In another video, Deal seems to corroborate Wright's allegations about Diddy, if not adding more weight to them. He mentions Diddy's gender fluidity. Deal also suggests that he personally witnessed the bad boy CEO engaging in activities with other men. In one interview, Gene also revealed Diddy has also asked 50 Cent to go shopping with him, and 50 Cent declined because he felt uncomfortable with the idea, likening it to being treated like a girlfriend. 50 Cent will whoop, 50 Cent will whoop niggas like Stevie J on the way to a real fight. Have you seen 50 fight before? I ain't never seen 50 fight. I seen some tapes of him get down on that end, but I never seen him fight in person. But I know the demeanor of a man. I was with 50 Cent on a couple of occasions. However, when 50 Cent was asked directly why he referred to Diddy as gay, he gave a succinct response. 50 believes Diddy exhibits behaviors associated with homosexuality. Nevertheless, 50 clarified that this shouldn't be misconstrued as a homophobic joke, emphasizing... I don't call him gay. When Diddy appeared on The Breakfast Club following 50 Cent's claim, he addressed the allegations by stating that there was no animosity between him and 50, asserting that 50 actually harbored affection for him. Regarding the shopping invitation, Diddy explained that he extended the offer because he noticed 50's lack of clothing, implying it as a gesture of goodwill rather than anything suggestive. In addition to the numerous allegations Gene has made public, he also asserted that Diddy was extremely harsh on Kim Porter during their relationship. According to Gene, Diddy's mistreatment of Kim extended beyond emotional maltreatment to physical harm. Gene recounted a disturbing event where Kim had to defend herself with a corkscrew. Yes, you heard that right. One evening at Kim's residence on 110th Street, Diddy crossed a line, prompting Kim to fight back in self-defense. She grabbed a corkscrew and inflicted a severe injury to his wrist, hitting an artery in the process. They had to rush him to St. Luke's Hospital where Gene found himself in the midst of the chaos. But the troubling revelations didn't end there. Gene disclosed that Diddy exhibited extreme control over Kim, even going as far as sending individuals to monitor her activities and ensure she didn't interact with other men. 
Meanwhile, Diddy was engaging in infidelity throughout their decade-long relationship, creating a toxic environment of manipulation and maltreatment. Hopefully, Gene Deal has garnered enough experience throughout his years working for the music mogul to safeguard himself while continuing to expose the truth about Diddy's misconduct. But what are your thoughts on this? Do you believe Gene Deal could be facing risks for speaking out against his former employer? Share your thoughts in the comments below. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this.